the LU decomposition states with the caveat that any square matrix can be represented as a product of a lower triangular and an upper triangular matrix, thus the name LU. The LU decomposition finds numerous applications, especially in numerical linear algebra. Numerical linear algebra deals with solving the problems of linear algebra on the computer. For us, the LU decomposition will be two things. Number one, it will be a very vivid illustration of the utility of elementary matrices. And number two, we will start seeing that every major algorithm of linear algebra has a decomposition associated with it. It's called a decomposition because A is decomposed or broken up to a product of two functions. So this will be the decomposition representation of the Gauss elimination algorithm. Other algorithms in linear algebra will have their own representations as valuable decompositions. This will be our first, and here's how it goes. Start with the matrix A. Now this one is square and invertible, but there is LU for matrices that are not invertible and even for matrices that are not square. Rectangular matrices have their own LU decomposition. That's not much different from this one. But for now, we're dealing with square invertible matrices, although the invertible part is not that important. And I also will tell you a little bit later what the caveat is that I mentioned. Not quite every matrix has an LU decomposition. There's one element which may pop up that changes things a little bit. So let's start with the matrix and let's perform the first two combined steps of Gaussian elimination, which is to subtract four of the first row from the second and seven of the first row from the third, thus eliminating this four and seven. You're well familiar with these two steps, so let me do them rather quickly. So this matrix goes to one, two, three, zero I'm skipping, negative three, negative six, and finally negative six, zero, negative six, negative 11. So after two combined steps of Gauss elimination, this matrix will transform into this one. But we know that with elementary matrices, we can capture row operations by multiplication. And because we're dealing with rows, the elementary matrices will come from the left. And the matrix that will affect these two steps of Gaussian elimination is this one. So it's gonna come on the left. And it's going to be the elementary matrix that subtracts four of the first row from the second and seven of the first row from the third. Can you think of what matrix does it? Well, it's very easy to determine that matrix. You have to say what you need to do, and then you need to do what you just said to the identity. That's the rule we worked out in previous videos. So what we need this matrix to do is to subtract four of the first row from the second and seven of the first row from the third. And so we should just do that to the identity. And here you go. We have our elementary matrix that performs the row operations that we needed to perform. And the nice thing about this is that we no longer have to use this arrow, which is a very vague symbol. If you just look on a piece of paper, you never know what the arrow means. This matrix goes to this one, but how? But now it can be replaced with a symbol that's opposite of vague. Now it's an equality, right? If we take this matrix and perform the row operations encoded in this elementary matrix, it will subtract four of row one from row two, seven of row one from row three, and we'll end up with this matrix. So right now it's a correct identity. Let's remind ourselves that this is our matrix A. All right, and we'll give this matrix a name. We'll call it L1. L because it's actually lower triangular. All of the steps of Gaussian elimination, but not of Jordan Beck substitution, just Gaussian elimination, will be captured with a lower triangular matrix, and that's where the caveat will come in. All right, what's the next operation? The next operation is to subtract two of row two from row three. We're going to do it once again with the matrix product. I erase the equal sign because with this matrix added here, 
the equality will actually not hold temporarily until we'll actually perform the steps of Gaussian elimination that we just mentioned. But what we need to do is what we just said, which is subtract 2 of row 2 from row 3. So let's actually perform that step that will eliminate the 6 and it will turn this 11 into a 1. All right, so now the equality comes back, the equal sign comes back. So now we have two steps of Gaussian elimination. Notice how we're marching left. We have to because these row operations stack on top of each other. So these actions must come from the left because we are indeed dealing with rows and that's how we're stacking them. We're stacking them to the left and we keep marching to the left. Let's give this matrix a name L2. Okay, and we're actually done with Gaussian elimination. The remaining steps would be Jordan back substitution and actually turning pivots into ones considered part of the second half of Gauss-Jordan elimination. So in Gauss elimination you just worry about making, uh, eliminating everything below the diagonal and you don't worry about making the pivots equal one. So we're actually done with Gauss elimination. So let's write down the identity that we now have and we will give this matrix a name. After you're done with Gauss elimination, the matrix that's left is upper triangular. That's the U in LU. So this will be capital U. And the identity that we currently have, let me erase this, I think this will come back in a slightly different part of the board, is this. Here is the identity that we now have. That A pre-multiplied, if you will, because it comes on the left by L1, and then pre-multiplied by L2 equals U. Let me leave some space. Well, I don't need any space right now. Equals U. So this matrix, remember that the product of two lower triangular matrices, even if it's more lower triangular matrices, will still be a lower triangular matrix. The product of any number of lower triangular matrices is a lower triangular matrix. So this is a lower triangular matrix. Let me give it a name. I will call all of these products, the product, the product of all of the matrices responsible for all the steps of Gaussian elimination combined, I will denote by the letter L, lowercase l. The individual matrices are L1, L2, L3, L4, and so forth, however many steps we need, and their product is L. So we have L, little l, times A equals U. So now I will multiply both sides by the inverse of little l, and I will call it capital L. So here's my notation. The inverse of little l is capital L. This is the L in LU. And when I do that, we'll have identity here because I'm multiplying both sides by the inverse of L. So here I will have A, and on the right hand side I will have LU. And that's where the LU decomposition comes from. And just note that because I multiplied by capital L on the left here, it must come on the left here as well, to the left of U. That's why it's the LU decomposition. And U is what's left of A after you're through with Gaussian elimination. And L is the inverse of the combination of all the Gaussian elimination steps that you had to perform to convert A to U. Now here's an interesting question. How would you actually compute L? Well, we don't really have L. And why is L lower triangular, by the way? Let me answer that question first. Well, we haven't discussed this, but products product of two lower triangular matrix is another lower triangular matrix. And it turns out, not hard to prove at all, especially if you simply visualize the inversion algorithm, that the inverse of a lower triangular matrix is lower triangular as well. 
what would that process be? The process of the inversion. We would take our matrix, in this case lower L, lowercase l, write identity next to it, and then begin Gaussian elimination on this combined matrix. And Gaussian elimination will only involve, because this is a lower triangular matrix, schematically like this, it will only use higher rows to perform, to act upon the lower rows. So there will, no, there will be no Jordan back substitution. The entire pro process of computing the row reduced echelon form of this matrix will involve going down, just Gaussian elimination. Maybe dividing uh, some rows by a number, which will still not introduce any numbers in the upper triangular half. So by the time this is identity, this will also be a lower triangular matrix. So the inverse of this matrix is another lower triangular matrix. How would you compute L? Well, one way to compute L is exactly the way we have it on the board, which is have these two matrices, multiply them together to give us the matrix L, and then invert the matrix L, and that will produce its inverse, which is capital L. Well, there is a faster way of doing it. Let me tell you what it is, and then in the next video, we'll illustrate it with an example. Maybe we'll complete this example. But what we know is that L equals L1 times L2. And if we had more matrices, times L3, times L4, and so forth. Excuse me, I wrote it in the wrong order, of course. And this is the one case where the order matters very much. L2, L1. So it's inverse. Remember, we have to now invert the product. And the inverse of a product is the product of the inverses in the opposite order. So capital L, which is the inverse of lowercase l, is the inverses of these matrices, which is nice because elementary matrices are easy to invert, in the opposite order. So L1 inverse, L2, L2 inverse, and so forth. If there were more steps, would have L3 inverse, L4 inverse, and so forth. So the strategy that this is suggesting is to perform Gaussian elimination. Forget about writing all of this on the board. But to perform Gaussian elimination, and by the time we get done with Gaussian elimination, we'll have our U, and to construct capital L, instead of recording the steps of Gaussian elimination, record their inverses. And remember that these inverses are very easy to find because elementary matrices are very easy to invert. For example, this, the inverse of this matrix would have a 4 and a 7, and the inverse of this matrix would have a 2. So write L equals, and then write the inverses of those matrices in the proper order from left to right. And then at the end, multiply all of them together, which is once again an easy thing to do because these are all elementary matrices, and you will have your L. So U is what's left of A when you're done with Gaussian elimination, and L is the product of all the inverses of Gaussian steps from left to right. That's the LU decomposition, and that's our vivid illustration of the utility of elementary matrices. This entire discussion was about elementary matrices. Now the caveat, what could go wrong here? You might think that, well, if the matrix is not invertible, that will, that will be a snag and break this algorithm. Well, it actually won't. If this was a nine, we would just end up with a zero here, and we would still call this an upper triangular matrix. Being upper triangular is concerned with everything below the diagonal being zero. Everything above the diagonal doesn't have to be non-zero. So having a zero here won't mess anything up. So it's not not being invertible. It's having to switch rows. If there comes a situation when we have to switch rows, the matrix that, it, that will represent that row operation will be something like this. And this matrix is not triangular. 
it is not lower triangular. So this matrix, when we put the product of all of them, there might be an S1 referring to the switch matrix. And this matrix is not lower triangular, so the entire product will not be lower triangular. So this L will not be lower triangular. So we would still have an LU decomposition, it's just that L would no longer represent a lower triangular matrix. Not a big deal. Mathematicians would sometimes call that matrix psychologically lower triangular. It's not actually lower triangular, but we think of it as lower triangular because it largely consists of matrices in the product that are lower triangular with this accidental matrix mixed in. And it turns out that when you perform Gauss elimination on the computer, it, it is beneficial for reasons of accuracy and more subtle numerical reasons such as stability. You will learn about that when you study numerical linear algebra. It's beneficial to switch rows even when you don't have to because you actually want the pivot to be the largest uh, available number in absolute value terms. So you will start switching rows for reasons of numerical algebra even if you really don't have to because the pivot is not zero but you get more accurate results if you do. So in most real applications, there will be a few of these mixed in and L is very much not lower triangular, but nevertheless, we would refer to this decomposition as LU. So there you go, LU, our first decomposition representing a major algorithm in linear algebra and a wonderful application of elementary matrices.